everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. We're so happy to have you all here with us. We can't thank enough everyone who made wonderful donations to this project, not just financial, but also the, the great energy and the support that went into making this a reality. Uh, and again, we're so happy to have you all here with us today to celebrate the return of Colonel Preston's dress uniform. Uh, we have an, a nice little program for you, and we are going to start off out here. And I believe uh, Doc is going to introduce um, the gentleman who is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd like to introduce a few folks. We just met our youngest member, Luke Morris, and our drummer. This is Colby Teller, who got us started in this project. I think we'll have he'll have a little bit more to say. And our commander, Bob Morris. So we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Flag up. This is an exact replica of the Third Vermont first flag that was introduced to the company on July 5th, 1861, by the ladies of St. Johnsbury who had ordered this flag for the 3rd Vermont Regiment before they went south on the 22nd of July, 1861. This is the flag we'll pledge allegiance to today. All of it? I pledge allegiance to the flag. Welcome everyone. Um, I would like to in introduce our first uh, speaker for the afternoon and that is Senator Jane Kitchell from the Caledonia District. I've known Jane for many years. Jane and her family have been long-standing Danville residents for many, many years. And I'll just tell you one quick story that Steve shared with me. Uh, Jane wasn't really aware of it, but <laughs> apparently um, Jane's late husband, Gil, was very fond of Civil War history, particularly Colonel Preston. And every year around Memorial Day, uh, Gil and Steve would have sort of a competition to see who could be the first to bring uh, memorial flowers down to decorate Colonel Preston's grave. I'm not sure what the count was on who, who won. Uh, each year, but <laughs> they were always um, very, very adamant about making sure that Colonel Preston's grave was appropriately decorated for Memorial Day. So, Jane. Thank you. Um, growing up in Danville, I think we all had a very strong sense of history. My grandmother um, lived on one of the houses on the park and so we played in the park and spent many hours probably injuring ourselves on the fence around the Civil War uh, monument. Um, and um, I'm looking out, Dave Hare. My husband um, was a member of the Hemlocks very early on um, and so uh, have a strong attachment to Civil War history. Um, as a member of the legislature, I think we could describe the Vermont State House as really a Civil War museum. It just permeates our daily um, sense of self. Also, Thaddeus Stevens, um, we have a, um, the Historical Society provided a, um, a portrait of Thaddeus Stevens as well. So um, in Danville, we may be small, but we have a, so a strong sense of history. My grandfather, McDonald, we grew up knowing that he was born on the day President Lincoln was shot. Um, and so um, I have, yes, been putting um, flowers, or actually a pot of plants, on uh, Colonel Preston's grave since for over 50 years. And so uh, this year I haven't had to go down and water much, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I usually used to be every couple of days. Um, so I, um, I do the Preston lot, the Sias lot, and the Bliss Nash Davis lot. And um, Patty mentioned there are actually a letter in the collection uh, from Colonel Preston to Bliss B.N. Davis, which is Bliss Nash Davis. And he was the state's attorney. He was an attorney with when Danville was the county seat. And um, if any of you know some of the lore, he actually was stabbed 
in the courtroom by Bristol Bill, who was a counterfeiter. So that's the more um, history here in Danville. Um, but it's really wonderful that we can bring the rest of the Preston collection um, back home. Um, this is really an important addition, and it was um, so impressive, the outpouring of support and the money to make this happen so quickly. So thank you um, to the Hemlocks as well. And I'm going to not um, pass it over to whoever's next, Patty. I don't have my glasses on. I'm going to call it. Thank you, Senator Kitchen. So I'm Dr. Mensinger, actually I was a doctor, retired, uh, but I've been running with the Hemlocks for quite a while, as you can see from my outfit. I'm sort of portraying the 1864 look uh, when they charged over the parapets at Petersburg, or 1865, the spring of 1865. The uniforms did get dirty as the war went on. So I don't have a frock coat, I don't come fancy, I just come as myself. On the other hand, uh, we have a couple of other folks here that we should sort of mark. Colby Tuller got us started with this. He saw the, uh, the equipment here uh, from Colonel Preston on the uh, horse shoulder, which is a, uh, a store that has uh, all sorts of memorabilia from the Civil War, and our commander, Bob Morey. But the other person that we should really, and I don't see Steve in here as usual, Steve Wakefield, probably has put the arm on everyone in this room to give money to this <laughs> He was determined that, uh, that uh, Colonel Preston, or Addison Preston's uniform come back. I had the opportunity, my, all three of my sons got me involved with the Hemlocks. I really never, I won the History Prize out of high school, but never thought I would really be doing this. But they got me interested, and I've done it for about 23 years now. And um, it is uh, rewarding. We were down this past January for the uh, event at Princeton, on the Princeton Battlefield. And I would commend you to go to the Princeton Battlefield, American Revolution, of course. And what was impressive there was that they had legacy units uh, from both the American and from the British side. So in other words, some of those units that fought <coughs> in the Princeton Battlefield still can sort of trace their history forward to modern day units. So with that, uh, I had the pleasure of inviting Lieutenant Colonel Travis Myers from the 100 and 72nd D, squadron, first squadron uh, of the Vermont Cavalry, of the modern day cavalry, Mountain Division, is that right? That's correct. Did I get all of that right? <laughs> no, all right. I'm, 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 I'm just a little bit private, so I don't sometimes keep up with all this uh, higher up stuff. Lieutenant Colonel Preston. Uh, right, we'll talk about Lieutenant, <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Preston. Lieutenant Myers will speak about Lieutenant Colonel Preston and the connection perhaps back to the first Vermont Cavalry. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And I can tell you that it keeps the Vermont tradition of duty going. Obviously, Preston went down, Civil War, never returned home. Um, I understand you've been overseas yourself, so Correct. Uh, that duty from Vermont continues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for, for having me on, on this uh, amazing uh, occasion and event. Uh, it's truly an honor to be here. Um, as, as Doc said, I'm the commander of the current cavalry squadron that traces its lineage all the way back to the unit that Colonel Preston was in charge of. So we continue a lot of traditions in the military, um, and, and we're really proud uh, to be a part of something that goes back as far as the Civil War and, and even before that when we trace it back to militias. But, um, I personally uh, am, am the current commander, but I do have a, a, a commander in my ranks. I'm going to introduce you. He's, he's a, kind of a history buff, so I really wanted to give him the opportunity to talk. Um, but uh, I'm going to introduce Captain uh, Thomas Hemmerling. He's our headquarters company commander, um, and he's just really going to give you a, just a quick story on, on how uh, we, we trace our lineage back to fine gentlemen and officers like, uh, like Colonel Preston. So, Tom? Thank you everybody for having us here, this is awesome. I, as a kid I was kind of dreaming about being in a Civil War uniform someday. Never had the opportunity so I joined the Army instead. And, <laughs> um, but two main points really um, about Colonel Preston himself and then the regiment as a whole. Um, for people that aren't in the military, sometimes it's hard to understand the sheer responsibility, um, excuse me, that 
officers, enlisted NCOs, non-commissioned officers have in the military. Um, Colonel Myers is a lieutenant colonel, the same as Preston Addison. In today's modern military, that would look like 15, 16 plus years of service. I'm currently a captain, which in the typical military is four, five, six, seven years of service. Colonel Preston came into Vermont uh, militia as a captain, mustered, formed a unit, trained, and then was sent to the South during the Civil War. Within less than a year, Colonel Preston was promoted from my rank to Colonel Meyer's rank with the responsibility of almost 700 soldiers. If you look at that in today's world, that would be like me here standing before you being given Colonel Meyer's job on the spot and being told, go to war with these soldiers, make decisions for these soldiers. So we can't understand in today's world what the, the level of responsibility that Colonel Preston had on, in a split second. In today's world, it was a split second. Here's 700 soldiers, take them to war, you're responsible for all of their lives. You really can't put yourself in that situation and understand that until you're there. And he, of all people, gave the ultimate sacrifice for those men and brought almost 500, 550 of them back home to Vermont. So that level of responsibility is just absolutely incredible. Um, for the history that a small town like Danville has, um, that's something to be incredibly proud of. I'm, I'm from a small town as well, just like this. Um, so to have that lineage, have that history is, is outstanding. So again, I appreciate you having me here. Um, in today's Vermont National Guard, um, at all of our ceremonies, at all of our uh, receptions, if you will, um, we still uh, respond to a commanding officer, to a commanding uh, general, whoever it may be, a superior officer, with a salute and first Vermont. So that is how we've tied to this day, 170, 75 years later, the importance of where we came from, where we went, and where we're going forward. And it will always remain with us as long as we are first Vermont, as long as we are the CAV. So again, I really appreciate you having me here. This was awesome to see. Um, great, uh, great looking group of folks here. Love the militia. So thank you again. And I think Colby's next. Well, good afternoon. It's an honor to be here on this monumental day. And I'm a proud member of the Vermont Civil War Hemlocks. I've been in the group a few years now. Um, it's been a great honor and a privilege to be part of this amazing team and amazing project to finally bring home and dedicate the uniform and artifacts of Colonel Addison Preston which would, he was Danville's most famous Civil War hero and a hero of our most defining conflict, the American Civil War. Um, I'm very pleased and overjoyed to see that the Colonel's uniform is finally back home here in Danville and to know that we accomplished a mission in an overwhelmingly short amount of time to preserve a legacy, a legacy of an extraordinary soldier, cavalry officer, leader, disciplinarian, and of course person. Addison Preston was respected by all his officers, all his men, and uh, effectively all the whole state of Vermont. He uh, cared for his men and was ready pl to place himself wherever he sent his men, and it shows what kind of officer and person he was. In the tragic event of his, of his death 159 years ago in 1864, General George Custer of the 7th Cavalry, known for being killed at Little Bighorn, um, made voice the opinion of many. He said, there lies the best fighting colonel of the Cavalry Corps. Colonel Preston is a great hero to this community, state, and the country. When I found the uniform grouping in October of 2022 at the Horse Soldier in Gettysburg, I never thought anything like this would happen. Thanks to the hard work of the Historical Society, the Hemlocks, and this great team, and this, and you, the public, we finally made this dream to preserve the colonel's uniform a reality. This collection is in phenomenal condition, as you can see, and there's no better way to understand the American Civil War than going to the places, the battlefields, to the hallowed ground where the men, like, and Union and Confederate, bravely fought and shed their blood and paid the ultimate sacrifice 
for freedom what they believed in. And of course, with the artifacts of the people like Addison Preston, who were there to hold them, wear them, use them, and it's a testament to what they did in our country for in the American Civil War, and our testament to Addison Preston's life. The successful accomplishment of this project is personal to me, as I had a relative in the 1st Vermont Cavalry who was wounded at Gettysburg. But the other reason is because I was part of this phenomenal project to preserve a hero's legacy and um, to bring home the uniform of this soldier who was from this small American town in this small state back home. Um, he was one of 600,000 Americans to shed their blood in the Civil War between 1861 and 1865, and for all intents and purposes, defined us as a country. Um, Preston's story is being preserved and told. He fought bravely and gave the ultimate sacrifice for freedom. With his uniform and legacy and memory, will never, will never be forgotten. It must never be forgotten. So, thank you for ever, for helping us bring this uh, uniform home, and thank you for having me here today. Good afternoon. I was asked to say a few words about the Vermont Civil War Hemlocks to let everybody know a bit more about who the organization is. The organization started back in the early 1960s. There was a lot of uh, revelry going on to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Civil War during the 60s. Here in, Hem in Caledonia County, uh, Andy Fisher, who's a local history teacher, formed the Hemlocks with a handful of other people. They were enthusiasts of the Civil War and wanted other people to know more about it. So they formed this nonprofit organization called the Vermont Civil War Hemlocks. <coughs> the word hemlocks was taken because a lot of Vermont soldiers put a sprig of hemlock in their hat when they were sent south so that they could identify themselves as fellow Vermonters. So that's where the name hemlocks came from. The group was focused on informing people about the Civil War in general for the first few years. But more particularly, the story of Vermont and Vermonters' efforts during the war. We have a long history of successful fundraising. Back in the 60s, the group fundraised and had a replica three-inch ordnance rifle, one of the cannons setting up here and back that we're going to be firing when this talk is done this afternoon. <clears throat> Folks from all over Vermont and many other states have seen the hemlocks in various parades, civic events throughout the country. And we've been to many of the national battlefields for reenactment, so we've got a presence nationally as well as here in Vermont. The thing that we take a lot of pride in is knowing that soldiers are people of action. They do things. They're, just as the troops on a battlefield will adjust to what's happening, so too have the hemlocks had to pivot over the years. Over the years, the hemlocks have been based on what I, four solid principles that always guide what we are doing as an organization. We, first and foremost, are about education, preservation, conservation, and cooperation. Those four things go hand in hand to bring any project to successful completion. If you indulge me for a minute, I'll talk about a few of the accomplishments the group has had in the few years, the 60 years that we've been around. In the field of education, we've given hundreds of presentations at schools to teach young folks about the Civil War and hopefully incite some, spark some interest to keep them involved throughout their life. We've participated in the State House on Farmers' Nights many times and other occasions at the State House when um, things like uh, pictures were being installed in the State House. We've done parades and community events throughout the whole New England area. And preservation. The Addison Project, Addison Preston's project, is the second largest fundraising effort we've ever undertaken. We had a goal of $30,000. We met that goal and surpassed it, I believe. The largest fundraiser we ever had was $50,000 we raised to buy an original Civil War cannon. It was available to us. We never thought we'd raise the $50,000, and it took us a lot longer than it did to raise the $30,000 for Addison Preston's uniform. But 
number, gun number 229 from the Phoenix Iron Works down in Pennsylvania is up here. I hope you'll all stop and take a look at it. We've raised money for preservation. We've raised over $50,000 and donated on behalf of Vermonters to help preserve the original battlefield sites at Gettysburg, the Wilderness, Cedar Creek, 2nd Fredericksburg, and Gettysburg. We've raised and contributed money to build granite, granite monuments and had them erected on battlefield sites at Lee's Mills, Big Bethel, and a special monument honoring Willie Johnson at Harrison's Landing. <clears throat> In the conservation field, we just recently donated a field manual that General George Stannard carried in his pocket during the war. We know it was his because he signed his name inside. And we went to the Vermont Historical Society. They have a large collection of his uh, materials. And they authenticate, auth whatever that word is. <laughs> you know the word I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Made sure it was authentic. And so we added that, donated that to the collection at the Vermont Historical Society. We've donated paperwork to many, many other uh, historical societies throughout Vermont. We've uh, got a current, uh, we've got a collection of papers over in the Vermont Mich Militia Museum over in Colchester. And currently we're working on another project to restore the 5th Vermont Regimental Drum. We are going to be looking for a home for that soon and I'll be talking to the folks at the Vermont Historical Society as soon as we have the drum back from the uh, repair work that's being done. I talked about cooperation. None of the work that we've done in the past could have ever been done in a vacuum by our small group. I'd like to thank the National Park Service, state and local officials, the Vermont Historical Society, the St. Johnsbury Heritage Center, and of course all the local historical societies as well. <clears throat> I'd like to thank Danville Historical Society for partnering with us to bring this co impressive collection home. We had a very short time frame. I was somewhat skeptical that we could do it, but the guys pitched in and it came together incredibly fast. So I hope his Addison Preston story is told many times over. We look forward to doing another project, if we can find one with you, or any of the other historical societies in the state. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you a very special guest that we have here with us today, all the way from San Diego, California. Uh, Mr. Bob Preston, which some of you may have already met, um, came all the way to be with us today to uh, celebrate this acquisition and uh, help the, uh, keep the legacy of his family, the Preston family, going on for many, many years to come. I met Bob uh, last summer. He contacted me. He wanted to come and visit the Historical Society and see uh, the artifacts that we already had relative to Colonel Preston. And at that point in time, we had no idea what was on the horizon, this, this big project. So as soon as Bob found out what was going on, and uh, he, he was very generous in his support for this project, uh, as soon as he found out that we had acquired the collection and we were going to be doing a dedication, he immediately started making travel plans for Vermont. So here he is today, the great-great-nephew of Colonel Addison W. Preston, Bob. <laughs> My goodness, quite the introduction. Uh, I'm not sure I deserve it. Um, as Patty mentioned, I'm Bob Preston. I'm from Del Mar, California. I can't even believe what an honor it is to be here. Um, so I heard, I've heard lots of stories about Danville and Colonel Preston from my parents, my uh, grandparents, and I was finally able to visit, as Patty said, last summer, and I felt this amazing initial, just right away, this connection to Danville. And it's just such an honor to be here today. I have three sets of grandparents buried here, um, two in Danville Green and another over in the Presumptic uh, Cemetery. And um, Addison is here as well uh, with his wife, Julia. And when the event came up, I just had to be here to represent the family. So thank you so much for having me. 
Thank you to the Danville Historical Society and the Vermont Civil War Hemlocks for bringing Addison's Civil War artifacts back to Danville and making this a special place. And I hope you all understand this for people like me who don't live here but have this incredible family history and a great place for me to come to visit and uh, always feel welcome and as a connect part of your community. So thank you very much, everyone. And now for the second part of our program, we're going to ask everyone to file back outside um, from whence we came. And uh, in a few minutes, we will, we will um, continue on with the rest of the program. So, I have spent 23 years trying to connect to Civil War soldiers, and I never thought I had a relative in the Civil War. But if you go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania Monument, Company E, 139th Pennsylvania, there's a William E. Minsinger, my namesake, and his family left Germany 30 miles from where my family left Germany. So somewhere in the Middle, middle Ages, we were probably connected. So there's always a connection. But how do we really connect with that as a question? So I had asked Patty whether we could actually see that in the up. So that tune was had new words put to it. It was actually the, the music was Glory Hallelujah, written by a Southerner. And the boys had gotten stanzas together for John Brown's body. But Julia Ward Howe from Boston, an abolitionist, went south with the Christian Commission and heard the boys, you know, beating out the John Brown body. Well, she got the idea that she could perhaps do better with poetry. She actually was a poet. And uh, she woke up in the middle of the night and had six stanzas. So you almost always hear five stanzas in the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and that's how it was published. But 
she had actually written a sixth stanza in today's historic event, we will sing all six stanzas that she wrote. But I call your attention to the fifth stanza, where it says, let us die, <coughs> make men free. And that's what Addison Preston did. So we need to keep in mind his sacrifice. So, I am not going to say who is the same. Um, <laughs> Tom C., where are you? <laughs> We're all going We're all to sing. Right, well, I'm not going to start off because I can't sing where it is. If someone would start us off, <laughs> I'm taking the mantle into the Republic, all six stands. Wakefield. Absolutely. Three cheers for Sergeant Wakefield. Hip hip. Huzzah! Hip hip. Huzzah! Huzzah! 